Okay, let me show you the contents of this video which I am going to cover. First, I will introduce the topic. Then I will explain what is the deep RCNN. Then I will explain the proposed scheme using deep RCNN uh, for detecting the traffic stop signs from images and videos. Then I will explain how you can use the MATLAB's uh, image labeler application for image database creation. Then I will explain the MATLAB code for training. After that, uh, the MATLAB code for testing. And in the last, I will explain the code execution and the final result analysis. So let's go ahead. But before going ahead, I strongly recommend you to watch following my uh, three videos. Uh, the first one is about how to create a deep neural network in MATLAB, where I have implemented the digit recognition example. Uh, if you go through this video, you will have the basic ideas about uh, the implementation of the deep CNN in MATLAB. You can uh, learn how to implement it, uh, what are the different layers of it, and uh, how does it work. So this video you can uh, find on the link that is given in the description. And the second video is about the ECG signal classification uh, using the wavelet features and the deep neural network in MATLAB. So here I have used uh, uh, AlexNet, that is a pre-trained network via transfer learning. So this is also a very good video. Uh, the link is uh, given in the description. And the third video is about the implementation of the deep CNN uh, in Python with help of the TF and Keras. So where I have taken the face mask detection problem. So if you go through this video, you will have the idea about the implementation of the deep CNN in Python environment. So you can go through this video uh, and that is available on this link, which is given in the description. So let's start this video. So first let's see the basics of the RCNN. So RCNN is actually uh, known as the regions with a convolutional neural network. It's a deep learning approach that is used to detect the various objects in an image. So the RCNN finds uh, its various applications such as uh, the autonomous vehicles, uh, the smart surveillance systems and facial recognition, etc. So uh, the models for object detection using the RCNN actually uh, are based on uh, the following three uh, processes. So the first one is uh, uh, it finds the regions in the image that might contain an object. So these are known as the reason proposals. Uh, once the, these regions are found, uh, we extract the features of these regions with help of the CNN. Once the features are extracted, then we classify the objects on the basis of these extracted features. So these are three basic steps of the RCNN. And now uh, let's see the different versions of the RCNN which are in use. Uh, it has a total three variants. Uh, the first one is the basic RCNN, second is the fast RCNN, and third is the faster RCNN. The first two are proposed by the same person and third one is the proposal of the another person. Uh, the first one, that is the basic RCNN, it is actually the slow in training and the detection. So that's why it's not suitable for the real-time application, uh, but it allows the custom reason proposals. So uh, this fast RCNN is actually the improvement over this RCNN. So it is faster than the previous, but uh, is still not fast enough to deal the real-time applications. And it also allows the custom reason proposals. Uh, but this third one is uh, fastest among these uh, three, uh, which utilizes the optimal runtime performance and can be used for real-time application, but it is not fast as the YOLO. And uh, it doesn't support the custom reason proposal. Now let's see uh, what is inside this basic RC Anon. Actually, in this uh, video, I'm going to implement only the basic RC Anon version. Uh, I'm not implementing the faster and the fast RCNN for this example. Okay, so this is the basic uh, scheme of uh, RCNN. Uh, in this figure, you can see. Uh, so this is the input image. And uh, this uh, basic RCNN uh, detector actually first generates the uh, region proposals. I mean, these uh, uh, regions, uh, different regions in this image. Uh, using some selective search algorithm such as uh, edge boxes. Uh, these reason proposals are actually 2000 in the count uh, for this basic version of RCNN. 
so that's why it is slower because it has to uh, identify the 2000 uh, uh, areas i mean region of interest for each image uh, once uh, these uh, proposals are identified then each region is cropped out from uh, image uh, it is resized and reshaped to the square and then uh, uh, these uh, region proposals are fed to the CNN for classification. So here you can see that uh, the different objects contained by these regions are classified by the CNN. And uh, the region proposal bounding boxes are refined by uh, a support vector machine. So here you can see that SVM uh, is there which is used to uh, uh, refine the bounding boxes around these identified objects in an image. So this SVM is trained by the features uh, which, uh, which are obtained by this CNN during the training. So this is overall uh, scheme of this basic RCNN. Uh, the faster version and the fast RCNN are more complex than this. So if you are interested for those versions, you can go for their corresponding documentation. And uh, now let's see the proposed scheme. So this is a proposed scheme uh, which is implemented in this uh, video tutorial. Uh, so first uh, uh, we import the pre-tained RCNN layers. Uh, actually I'm using the transfer learning. I'm not uh, training uh, the RCNN from the scratch. So definitely that will require the huge amount of uh, images. So that we are not doing. Uh, we are just fine tuning uh, this uh, pre-trained RCNN layers with our a small image database. So we have image folder uh, which contains a few images uh, such as let's say around 100 images and then these images are prepared for training by uh, this image labeler application of the MATLAB. So here we have to uh, uh, define the ROI in each image, I mean the corresponding bounding boxes around the uh, objects that uh, those uh, are to be uh, detected. So the training is done and once training is finished, then we go for the testing. So we give uh, the unknown uh, images and videos uh, to uh, the testing and then we, uh, we can uh, judge uh, what outcome we achieve. So let's go for uh, the image labeler application. Uh, as I said that uh, uh, we are using a pre-trained RCNN network, uh, but it must be trained on our own set of images for fine tuning. So therefore, uh, an image database has to be created. Uh, it may not necessarily contain the millions of images, but a uh, few images will be sufficient to fine tune this pre-trained RCNN. So for RCNN, uh, we have to define the region of interest by bounding boxes in an image. So that we can uh, see in this example that what we are going to do. So we have these uh, images uh, which are uh, having these uh, stop signs. So we have to draw this uh, bounding box as you can see of yellow colors in each image. So that is defining the region of interest in each image. So that will be done uh, with the MATLAB image labeler application. Okay. So uh, for the proposed uh, scheme, I have just taken only the 60 images which are downloaded from the internet from different websites uh, which contain this stop traffic sign. So all the downloaded images of course will be of the different sizes. Uh, so what I have done, uh, actually uh, if you go for the big images for training and testing, definitely it will take lots of time. So I have uh, resized all the images. Uh, to a common width of 640 pixels uh, while other dimension I have just let it free uh, to preserve its aspect ratio. So uh, by this uh, I have reduced the size of all the images and that will definitely cause less training and less testing time. So uh, once uh, this uh, resizing is done, uh, now all the images uh, will be imported uh, to the image labeler application of the MATLAB where uh, I will mark the bounding boxes around these traffic signs. So once this is done, uh, then I can export that uh, uh, database with ROIs, I mean the reason of interest uh, to the MATLAB workspace or I can save uh, that as a MAT file uh, in my uh, directory. So let me show you uh, that how I can use the 
image labeler application of the MATLAB. So this is my MATLAB and uh, just go to this application tab. So here you can locate that this is the image labeler. If it is not here, then just uh, go to the image processing and computer vision and there you can find this image labeler. So just press it. Uh, it will open a window for you where you can do this operation. So this window is opened and here uh, uh, you can see this uh, load uh, tab. So just press it and uh, here it asks the add images from the folder. So I am uh, pressing it and uh, now I am uh, jumping to my current working directory. So here I have uh, uh, stored all my 60 images which are resized to 640 pixels in this uh, 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 folder uh, which has the name stop sign DB. You can give any name to your folder. So here you can see all the 60 images uh, in this folder. So now I will select all the images with control A and then open. So you can see that all the images are imported here uh, in this image labeler applications. So all 60 images are here. So this is my first image. Uh, now uh, go to this button uh, ROI label definition. So define new ROI label. So just press it. And here you have to give the name of uh, the bounding box. So I'm giving the name S-T-O-P-S-I-G-N stop sign. Now see this name, I have used a stop sign name. Uh, actually, uh, I'm using a pre-trained network of MATLAB. And uh, in that pre-trained network, the MATLAB has used this uh, name, stop sign. So if you are implementing this for your case, you have to uh, give this name only. If you give some other name, uh, MATLAB will give the error. So that's a limitation uh, in this case because of the pre-trained network. So see uh, this uh, label name, you have to follow exactly the same with all uh, uh, some uh, caps. I mean this S is in caps and other are in the small letters. So just press it OK. So here you can see that stop sign label is created. Now draw a bounding box uh, around this uh, image. So this bounding box is created. OK, so your work is done for first image. Just go to the second image and again uh, draw this region of interest. Uh, I'm in this bounding box and then select the third image. Again draw this bounding box. Go to the fourth image. Uh, select this uh, bounding box and so on. So you have to do this uh, manually for all uh, 60 images. Okay. So of course uh, this is uh, uh, it requires lots of efforts. Uh, suppose if you have the thousands of images. Uh, now once all the 60 images are finished with this uh, bounding box, now go to this export labels. So here you can see that export labels uh, button. If you press it, uh, it gives the two options, two file and two workspace. So just press the two workspace and uh, here it will ask uh, export format. So it has the two formats, ground truth format and the table format. So here I'm using the table format. Just select the table format and uh, here the select the name of the variable. So again, you have to choose uh, this uh, variable name exactly the same which I am using because of a pre-trained network limitation. So this is uh, just see stop signs and now press the OK button. So all the uh, images are now exported to the workspace. So here you can see that stop sign uh, variable is created, uh, which has a 60 rows and two columns, uh, and it is of type table. So 60 rows means uh, each for uh, 60 uh, images and uh, two column, let's see what are inside that. So just double click it variable, and here you can see uh, this uh, table structure. So in the first column, actually, I'm getting uh, uh, the, uh, the path of my image, okay? So it's a complete path of my image with all directory structure. And uh, here you can see that uh, I I'm getting these four numbers. Actually, these four numbers are the coordinates of your uh, bonding box, which I have drawn for this first image. So 
similarly, uh, this is the uh, for second image, for third image, and for fourth image. So as you can see that I have just drawn only for four images, so that's why I'm getting these four bonding boxes, and uh, rest are null because I I didn't use uh, that uh, bonding box for remaining images. So this is uh, how you can use the image leveler application uh, to prepare the image data set uh, that will be used for training NRCNN. So now what you have to do, uh, you can uh, use uh, directly it from workspace or you can save it uh, as a mat file. So just go to the save workspace and you can save this into your current directory with uh, some name. So that will be saved to the mat file and uh, once it is saved then you can call it uh, anytime whenever you want to train your own rcnn okay so right now i am closing it uh, and i am clearing it uh, because i have already done this work and i have already stored that file so here you can see that uh, this is my file uh, stop sign table dot mat so that is uh, uh, shown in the current folder so uh, it, it carries all the 60 images with their corresponding bounding boxes. So now come back to the presentation. Uh, so let's go for the MATLAB code. So this is the MATLAB code for uh, training. And uh, here you can see uh, the first I am loading the network layers of a pre-trained network. So this is the MATLAB uh, inbuilt file rcnn stop science dot mat. So you have to just load this dot mat file and it has lots of other variables, uh, but I don't uh, need those variables. I am interested in only the layers of the rcnn, so which is pre-trained. Okay, so all the layers will be loaded into the workspace. And now load the database, which I have just created with help of the image labeler app. So this is the .mat file which I have just saved in the current directory uh, by drawing all the uh, bounding boxes on images. So my uh, layers are loaded and then my uh, uh, database is also loaded. And with these graphs, I am just displaying all the layers of this uh, pre-trained RCNN. So where you can see how many layers uh, it has and what are those different layers. And uh, now I'm defining uh, the training options uh, such as the solver, uh, there is SGDM, and I'm uh, defining the mini batch sizes, uh, then initial learning rate, and then maximum epochs that, is, uh, that I'm taking the 10 epochs. And uh, with this uh, train RCNN object detector function, uh, the training will start. And once training is completed, uh, everything will go into this variable. I mean, all the trained layers and their corresponding weights will go to this RCNN. So uh, you can save this RCNN uh, for uh, future testing or you can do the testing at that moment also. So here you can see uh, in this uh, uh, training, uh, I have passed these uh, layers which I have already loaded and then training options and then uh, this uh, database. Okay, so this stop sign variable is carrying all uh, uh, my uh, images of database which have their corresponding bounding boxes and uh, one uh, important parameter also I am defining here that is the negative overlap range. If you want to know more about this uh, option negative overlap range uh, you can refer its documentations in the MATLAB and uh, now this is the example uh, code for testing. So here I am giving input uh, images and this is in the offline mode. So with these uh, commands, I am reading my input image. So a system dialog box will appear where you can select your test image. So that uh, test image will go into this IMG variable. And then this IMG variable is passed into this detect function. So this is your RCNN variable, which is uh, obtained during the training phase. So it is carrying all the uh, trained layers and their corresponding weights. And with this detect function, this image input will go through the detection process, okay? So all the corresponding bounding boxes will be drawn and that information will go to uh, these variables. So all the bounding boxes 
uh, coordinates detected uh, bounding boxes coordinates will go into this b box and uh, all the confidence score will go there and the label name will go uh, in this variable label so i'm getting all the information uh, of the outcome and then i am finding the number of uh, uh, detected bounding boxes i mean that is corresponding to the number of objects detected and uh, then i am combining uh, the bounding box and then score to uh, form uh, this uh, uh, this uh, matrix a score box and then i am sorting uh, in the descending order uh, so that at the top i will get the entry of uh, having the maximum score okay and uh, now i am uh, inserting this uh, uh, annotation in the image uh, this is uh, i have highlighted because it's a single nine okay so don't write as it is uh, because of the space limitation uh, it has come into the two lines but in matlab uh, text editor uh, please ensure that they should be in a single line so uh, this is uh, inserting object annotation so in the image i am uh, inserting a rectangle uh, and then a corresponding score box uh, then uh, i'm uh, writing uh, over uh, that box as a stop sign with the corresponding confidence score so you will uh, get inside an image if the object is detected then you will get a bounding box and then corresponding label uh, on that and uh, uh, this i am doing uh, again if there are uh, more than one uh, uh, detected objects in same image so uh, you you have to draw the more than two uh, rectangle uh, i mean uh, bounding boxes in that image okay so now let's see another program uh, that is used for uh, again testing but now in this case the input is video and uh, this is also in the offline mode so uh, with this uh, uh, with these lines i am selecting my video so you can give uh, any video uh, as a test video and then i am defining a video reader object so that will be used to read this video and then i am uh, initializing a video player uh, also so with this vision uh, dot video player command so your output will be displayed in this video player then i am defining a variable uh, for this while loop uh, condition so no loop true means uh, you will enter into this while loop and uh, then uh, i will read the frame from that loaded video so each frame will be uh, uh, read by uh, this command inside this loop so the first frame will come to the img and then it will go to this detect function so all the bounding boxes will come here and then same code is repeated which we have already seen in the previous example and uh, then corresponding uh, annotation is inserted in the images again uh, i have highlighted this because it's a single line okay it is a single line uh, so be sure when you write this code into uh, the matlab text editor it should come in the single line not like this and then uh, with a uh, step video player means uh, uh, the image with all the bounding boxes and annotation uh, will be given to the video player object for display so by this way all uh, the frames will be extracted they will go to uh, detection function for object detection once objects are detected uh, the image with the corresponding bounding boxes and labels will be given to the video player object for display so you will see the video as the outcome with detected objects and uh, here i'm checking uh, whether the video player window is open so if you uh, uh, close the window of video player you will come out from this uh, while loop in between and this is the last code for uh, uh, testing where the input mode is video but this is a uh, real-time implementation so here uh, i'm using my laptop's webcam uh, and the uh, rest of the code is same which uh, we have seen in just uh, previous case uh, of video input okay so i have uh, used here the uh, uh, webcam object 
and uh, instead of uh, reading frame now I am taking this uh, snapshot function so that is used for this camera object. So you are taking or you are capturing the frames from the camera uh, live stream and that will go to the image and this image is passed to the detect function for object detection and the rest of the code is same okay. So now let me show you uh, how this uh, these codes uh, can be executed and what will be the corresponding output. So I am jumping to the MATLAB. So let me select the MATLAB. Okay, this is my MATLAB. And now let me close this image labeler. Its part is done. And uh, uh, this is uh, the program of training. So it is already written and let me press this run button to execute it. So I am just pressing this run button and let's see what happens. Okay, so the training has started. So now we can go to uh, the workspace and command window and we can see that what is happening. So here you can see that your MATLAB is busy uh, because training has started. But here you can uh, see uh, the information about your uh, pre-trained network. So it has total 15 layers. You can see the first layer is the input layer. Uh, followed by the convolution, max pooling, ReLU, then again the convolution, ReLU, average pooling, convolution, like that, and then fully connected layer, then fully connected RCNN, softmax, and then output. So uh, here uh, is the explanation of each layer. And uh, in the last, you can just see that stop sign. This is actually the name which uh, I have already given uh, during the database creation. So that's why I said uh, strictly follow uh, this uh, uh, label name. Otherwise, if you give some other name, the MATLAB will give error. So now the training has started. You can see uh, the step one extracting the recent proposals from 60 training images. So this is the first uh, step in basic RCNN as you have seen. So all the 2000 uh, uh, recent proposals from each images are uh, being extracted. So it has taken some time. So it is done. Now recent proposals uh, are extracted. Now 2000 recent proposals per image are now being fed to uh, the RCNN. So here you can see uh, the epochs, uh, first epoch, second, third like that and uh, the accuracy you are getting 100 100 like that this is uh, loss and this is the base learning rate and uh, this is the uh, information about the hardware which uh, is being used for this training so the training on the single cpu environment of course my laptop has not uh, the dedicated gpu okay if your laptop or machine has the dedicated gpu then this uh, training will be much faster okay so it will take lesser time. So for such uh, uh, classifications, actually uh, one must go for uh, a powerful hardware which is utilizing some GPUs like NVIDIA or uh, AMD Radeon sort of things. So for my this uh, single CPU, I have to wait for it. Okay, so training is uh, completed and now in the last step, you can see uh, uh, the bounding box uh, regression model. Uh, the training of the SVM is being done for each object class. So it is done. So training is finished. Now I can show you uh, the testing. Okay, so for testing, let me go to the testing program. So this is the testing program. And first, I will show you the testing with images. So actually, I have written uh, two codes in single program. So let me uh, disable the other part that is for video. So the first part is for image, which I have already shown you. So let me run this program. So it is asking me to choose uh, the image. So let me select uh, the image. And uh, so I'm selecting this second image and let's see what output I will achieve. Okay, so this is the outcome. You can see uh, this uh, stop sign is correctly detected 
and uh, you can see the co confidence score is one that means 100 percent okay so let me uh, select one more uh, image okay let me select one more uh, let's say this one and uh, let's see output okay so this is the output you can see the stop sign is uh, detected with a confidence score one and let me take one more uh, where I can have more than uh, one traffic signs yes this one so it has a uh, two traffic signs and let's see the output okay so this is the output so both traffic signs are detected correctly uh, let me go for one more uh, some more complicated one uh, I have one which has a three okay this one so it has a three traffic signs so let me see uh, they will be okay so very good uh, output I'm getting all the three are detected correctly with the confidence score one so this is the accuracy level of uh, uh, this uh, uh, network which is just fine tuned on uh, 60 images uh, uh, which, which, which were prepared by me uh, by using the image labeler. Now uh, I will show you uh, the output uh, with the uh, video as an input but in offline mode. So let me show that. So uh, I have to disable this first part which is for images and then the second part let me enable it so this video part is now enabled and i can run this program and uh, now let me choose my video so this is the video test video so i can choose so before choosing this let me show you what is inside this video so it will give you the better idea so this is the video actually so here you can see that uh, this uh, stop sign uh, like this so this is the is a short video and now let me run this program okay so i have selected and uh, program is being run the video player is initializing the window i mean the gui uh, just see the carefully okay so see carefully okay uh, this is the stop sign in the video which is recognized correctly with the confidence score 1. Uh, this is uh, running slow because uh, the poor hardware of my laptop it is not able to handle the video actually. Uh, because video has uh, the frame rate uh, around 25 or 30 frames per second. But uh, my hardware is not capable enough to uh, handle this video. That's why uh, it is uh, uh, not running smoothly. So if you if you, your computer has uh, the dedicated GPU, it will uh, be a better and smoother output. Okay, so this is uh, what I am getting as output. So let me uh, close this because it will take a lot of time. So it is done, right? Uh, but I can show you uh, this video uh, with the normal speed. I have already stored it. So just uh, see this. Uh, so here you can see that uh, uh, these uh, sign, traffic signs are uh, recognized correctly, okay. So now let me go for the real-time implementation. Uh, so this is the program for real-time implementation. So here I will use my laptop's uh, webcam. And uh, for that uh, I will uh, show uh, the image of this traffic sign in my uh, mobile phone as I cannot go outdoor uh, at this moment uh, so I will show uh, this real-time implementation uh, just by facing my uh, mobile phone uh, to the webcam uh, in my mobile phone uh, I have opened the image of the stop sign so let me run this program and uh, you can see uh, the webcam window will come and I have just faced uh, my mobile phone uh, to uh, this webcam. So here you can uh, see that this is recognized. Okay. 
again because of the very poor hardware uh, you are getting this uh, freezing frames in the video so sorry for that uh, so here you can see that it is uh, working in the real time so this is how you can uh, implement uh, this uh, traffic sign detection in real time okay that's it for this video i hope you have enjoyed it and you have learned a lot of new things uh, and i hope uh, uh, if you implement it you will definitely enjoy it so that's it for this session and uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this video and giving your valuable time i request you to please like it share it thank you